It's the Ringo Dance. So we're going to talk a little bit about how the Ringo Dance works. The first step is to go get the source code for it. So go to PlumGeek.com and go to the Getting Smart link. And then go down to Reference Code and go to Preloaded Behaviors Individual. If you click the download link for that, it'll open up a new tab that has our GitHub repository. Go down and get the zip file for the Ringo Dance. Once you get on the next page, go click on the raw button and that should download the actual raw zip file to you. It's a really small file, so it should download pretty quick. Once it's open, go ahead and extract it. And then take that folder that comes out of it and copy it. And let's go over to where your Ringo sketches are stored. Arduino, software from PG, and we'll paste it in there. Then we'll go over and we'll launch Arduino. Once you're inside Arduino, go to File, Sketchbook, Software, and go to the Ringo Dance. Um, I'll also point out that if you haven't restarted your Arduino since you dropped this in here, it might not show up in this list. And if that's the case, you can actually just go to Open, and you can navigate over there the long way. Go to the Ringo Dance, and you're going to open up this INO file. And that'll do the same thing. You can go ahead and close out the other window, and expand this window out so we can see what we're doing a little easier. So this here is the Ringo Dance, and we're going to talk a little bit about how it works. This is actually rather simple. The entire uh, personality is all just in these few lines of code. There's really nothing to it. I was amazed at how well this worked when I created it. The whole idea with this was to use some random number generators inside of the, the processor to make uh, Ringo randomly move around. And when I ran it, I was amazed at how much it looked like an actual dance. So uh, we're going to go through the whole thing here. So at the beginning here, we've got uh, our comments like we normally have on top of our sketches. Uh, we have the include Ringo hardware, which basically includes all these supporting tabs. And set up for this example, we're going to initialize a few variables. We're going to have an R, a G, a B, a freak, which is frequency, a right, and a left variable. So this is going to reserve a space inside Ringo's memory for the values that we're eventually going to place inside of these variables. So then we run our, our setup function, which has our normal setup stuff in it. We have our hardware begin, our player start chirp, uh, switch serial to motors, and navigation begin. And you know what? We're not actually using navigation functions in here at all, so we can get rid of that. Um, you can delete it out, or you can just comment it out, which basically means it won't load. And uh, by commenting that out, it's going to save a lot of uh, memory space that it would use in the background, which is just going to save the amount of time it takes to load the, the robot up. So once we get through setup, we're going to go into loop. And so we've got the loop function right here, and we've got the open curly along with the closing curly that's down here. So everything inside, that's all there is to it. Uh, so I've got a little note in here that there's no edge detection on here. Uh, Ringo's just going to randomly move around, so if he backs off the table, then he backs off the table. So keep an eye on him. We've got a paragraph here that talks about the behavior, and it says that we use the random function. And then I've provided a link to the actual official page at Arduino where it talks about the random function. So the random function is really interesting. It creates a random number for you, just like you would expect. And it's what they call a pseudo-random number, which means that the, the sequence will repeat itself eventually, uh, but for our purpose, it's, it's pretty random. The way the random function works is you uh, call the function and you give it a number and it will give you a random number between zero and that upper limit. And alternately, you can actually supply it with a beginning number also, which through some trial and error, I've discovered you can actually supply it with a negative number and it will work. So down here, if you call random with minus 200 comma plus 200, then you will get a number back between negative 200 and positive 200. So what we're going to do is go through the first time through the loop is it's going to go through and it's going to seed all these variables with random numbers. So it's going to go through and it's going to take the R variable and it's going to place a random number in it between 0 and 120. It's going to do the same with green, a different random number, and a different random number for B. And so those are going to become I colors for us later on. Right is going to get a random number between negative 200 and positive 200, which is going to be the right motor. The left is going to get the same thing. They're going to be a different random number for the left. And then freak, which is frequency, is going to get a random number between 2,000 and 8,000. And that's going to be 2,000 to 8,000 hertz, which is the tone that Ringo is going to produce as he's moving around. Once you have the random numbers generated, we're going to call the onEyes function. And instead of actually putting a hard number in here, like a 50 or a 100 or whatever, we're going to actually populate this with the values from these variables up here. So we're going to put the red value here, and the green value here, and the blue value here. 
So every time it goes through here, it's going to see these uh, RG and B variables with three different random numbers. And then it's going to call the onIs function and give it those three random numbers. So every time you call this, as long as you call it random up here again, it will change these values to something new. So every time the eyes change color, uh, they'll turn to a randomly a different color. So it's going to turn on the eyes. And you can see right here in the comment, set eye color. And then it's going to call the play chirp. And freak is the frequency, 100 is the volume. Um, I do notice on this uh, particular behavior that that chirp is rather loud. So if you want to turn it down a little bit, you can reduce this number down to you know 50 or 60, and it'll be quite a bit quieter for you. And then it's going to set the motors driving, and it's going to set whatever uh, left is going to be whatever this random number was up here, and right is going to be whatever this random number was. So now you have the, the eyes are a certain color, it's playing a tone, and the motors are driving. Now we're going to delay a tenth of a second, and then we're going to change the chirp. And we're going to do that again and again and again. Now, one thing you'll notice here is the second time we called chirp, instead of including the word frequency or freak inside here or that variable, we're actually going to include the entire function. So that's just showing you two different ways you can do something. So you can, uh, if you wanted to, you could have placed a line of code in here that said, Freak equals, actually I'm just going to go copy this right up here. Copy, paste, and then instead in here I could just put freak. So this right here would do exactly the same thing as if I just took this random right here and stuck it inside there. Um, I'll also note that this white space right here, this space is not required. It doesn't matter whether it's there or not. So sometimes it's easier to understand your code if you do it long ways like this, and sometimes it's a little better if you plug it in here. It just makes the code a little shorter, and so it's whatever your preference is. So it's going to turn on the eyes, play the chirp, start driving the motors, and then it's going to wait a tenth of a second and play a random note, or a different random note. It's going to wait two tenths of a second and play another random note, and then wait three tenths of a second and then play yet another random note. And then it's going to uh, loop right back up to the top. So every time you see Ringo change direction in this dance, it's every time these numbers play out right here. So if you want him to last longer in a certain direction, you could increase these. And so um, uh, his whole behavior would go a little bit slower. Um, you can make them a lot shorter. Um, you could also change it to where there weren't so many chirps in here. You could, for example, just comment this stuff out. So now all he's doing is uh, going a direction randomly, delaying a tenth of a second, and then immediately changing. And so you're not going to see him dance so much in, in this case. He's just going to kind of twitch around a little bit because he's not really going to um, go in any direction for any real significant amount of time. So hopefully that's inspiring to realize that with a, a very small amount of code and code that's pretty simple and easy to understand, you can actually make a little robot kind of come to life. Um, that's just kind of, that always amazes me that you can have rather lifelike behavior with really simple code. Uh, so hopefully this is inspiring. Go ahead and take this sketch and just play with it. Um, go ahead and just change it up any way you want. I'm sure you can get it to do some other stuff. Um, you can change the uh, limits for the chirp. Um, you could make it, for example, uh, the low chirp to always be a low chirp by making it between 2,000 and 3,000. And you could make this one be between 3,000 and 5,000. And you could make the next one up be between uh, 5,000 and 8,000. So in this case, it would be more of like a da 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 if you actually start running this, you might also notice something else that I kind of realized after I wrote this, is that you're not really going to hear this last chirp. And that's because it's going to loop so quickly at the bottom that it's going to go up to the top. And it does have a little bit of code to run up here. But you'll notice that it's going to run this code right here, which it's going to do in a couple millionths of a second. It's not going to take very long for it to run this code. Then it's going to go turn the eyes on to something new. And then it's going to change to a new uh, uh, chirp frequency. So the time between playing this one and playing this one up here is going to be extremely short and you're probably not even going to hear it. So you could just comment this out altogether and it probably wouldn't make any difference. Or if you actually wanted to hear it, you could put another little delay in here. Delay, maybe you want to go back to 200. So you can try uh, putting that delay in or taking it out and uh, loading it up to Ringo in both instances and see what kind of a difference it, it makes. Uh, that's kind of the, the real fun and starting to be able to play with the code like this is you can get to you know, kind of experiment around and just kind of dial in the behavior and kind of do your own thing with it. 
one other thing you could do is if you always wanted the uh, eyes to be some hue of like a pink or a purple or whatever, you could, instead of putting uh, uh, the random G in here, uh, whenever you populate the eyes, instead of putting uh, uh, the random number in there for G, you could just put a zero. And so that means that now just the random numbers for red and blue will be used. And because you're not using the G anymore, you can just comment that line out and it won't even compile it. And so now it'll just create a random number for red and a random number for blue. If you want the eyes to always be a little more on the blue side, then you could also put a low limit in here for blue. So you could put in here, for example, a low limit of 100 and maybe a high limit of maybe even 150. So that would guarantee that the eyes were always on at least a brightness of 100. And so the red going up and down would just kind of change the hue of purple that it was. So by playing with these different numbers, you can really start to change the behavior a lot. If you like when the robot ice skates backwards, instead of making it a negative 200 to 200, um, you could make it a negative 200 to 20. And so it would be much more likely that he would pull negative numbers rather than positive numbers. So that's that. We could play with this for hours, and I guess that's the whole point. So um, hopefully you found that inspiring. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll have another example up for you here pretty soon. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.